Ladies and gentlemen, Marcus Buckingham. Well, welcome. And I say, let's begin with some questions. And I don't know how self-assured you are, or how self-aware you are, or how self-reliant you are, but I'm going to bet my cotton socks that at one point in your life, you've asked yourself these questions. Maybe, maybe you ask these questions of yourself every day. Questions like, am I really living up to my potential? Questions like, am I really being as successful as I should be? And if I am, am I succeeding at the right things? That's always a good one, isn't it? And if I'm succeeding at the right things, how can I sustain and build and grow that success despite all the competing demands and craziness of my life? Or this one, this is always a tricky one. Am I really as good as I think I am? Maybe <laughs> if they turned on all the lights, they'd find me out. Believe it or not, those are the questions that we're going to focus on in this time that we have here today. We are going to focus on those questions as far as we can, because those are the questions, I think, that really challenge us to answer the question underpinning them all, which is, how can I be lastingly successful? The answer to that question, of course, as with most questions, can be found by interviewing people that have done it. And that's what I've dedicated my career to, interviewing people that have been lastingly successful in their chosen roles. So over the last 20 years or so, I've had the great good fortune to study people who have been truly successful at their chosen role. Great doctors, great lawyers, great teachers, great salespeople, great hotel housekeepers, all manner of different people. And of course, if you line them all up against the wall, the first thing that would strike you is just how very different they are. But if you look closer, and if you ask really good questions, you find out that they actually do all have the same approach to getting the best out of themselves. They all build on their strengths and find ways to manage around their weaknesses. So if you want to do the same, if you want to be lastingly effective in your chosen role in life, you need to build on your strengths and manage around your weaknesses. How do you do that? Well, frankly, the detail of that is the focus for this next book, Go Put Your Strengths to Work. But in simple terms, what it really means is, well, if you take a, a chap like me, growing up, I was always that kid who would ask questions like, well, why do we do it that way? Can we do it this way? Shouldn't we do it that way? Why do we do it that way? Let's do it this way. Why do we do it that way? So I was annoying. <laughs> no, but that's a strength, right? You could, call that, you could call that inquisitiveness or strategic thinking. On the flip side, I was terrible at confrontation, just terrible at it. I'm one of those people where the angrier I get, the less articulate I get. Now, you may be different. You may be one of those people where the angrier you get, the more articulate you get. As you find yourself getting perhaps more and more emotional, your brain gets clearer and colder as it hands you just one perfect word after another. <laughs> you really are annoying. No, it's not annoying, but for me, I mean, that, that, that's a weakness of mine. So build on strengths and manage around the weakness simply for me means deliberately. Put yourself in situations, Marcus, where you can play to that inquisitiveness, refine it, focus it, and then find ways to manage around the fact that you're not very confrontational. That's all that means. And I realize as I describe it that way, it just sounds so crushingly obvious. You've got to wonder why anyone would ever try to live a life in any other way. And yet you look around you, and you'll see that most of us don't choose to live our lives that way. 